You know, when my wife Linda suggested going on a family cruise, I thought it was a great idea. Sun, sea, a break from work. What could go wrong? Oh, if only I had known. Jack, don't forget, Mom's coming with us too, Linda said, packing the suitcases. I nearly choked on my coffee. What, Barbara's coming? You didn't mention this before. Linda shrugged. I thought you'd figured it out. It is a family cruise after all. Great. A week in a confined space with my mother-in-law. Just perfect. When we boarded the huge cruise liner Sea Pearl, I was still trying to come to terms with the upcoming journey. Barbara, as always, was the center of attention. Oh, look at this beautiful ship, she exclaimed, waving her arms. Jack, dear, could you carry my purse? It's so heavy. I gritted my teeth but took the bag. I had to be polite after all. Our cabins turned out to be on different decks. I breathed a sigh of relief, at least some room for maneuver. Jack, could you escort Mom to her cabin? Linda asked. I need to take the kids to the children's club. Of course, darling, I replied, trying to hide my irritation. Barbara and I were walking down the corridor when she suddenly stopped and grabbed the wall. Oh, I'm not feeling well, she moaned. I think I'm getting seasick. I rolled my eyes. Barbara, we haven't even set sail yet. Don't be so insensitive, Jack, she scolded me. You should take care of your wife's mother. I sighed and helped her get to her cabin. When we opened the door, I noticed something strange. Barbara, this isn't your cabin, I said, looking at the number. Yours should be one floor down. She looked at me with an innocent expression. Really? Oh, I must have mixed them up. Well, never mind. I'm sure I'll figure it out. I nodded and hurried away, feeling some unpleasant premonition. But I brushed it off. After all, what could happen? In the evening, we gathered on the upper deck for a welcome cocktail. The captain was giving a speech, and I was enjoying the cool breeze and the view of the sunset. Jack, dear, Barbara's voice suddenly sounded right in my ear. Could you get me another cocktail? This one is so weak. I turned around and nearly jumped. Barbara was standing too close, her hand on my shoulder. Um, sure, I mumbled, stepping back. I'll get it now. When I returned with the drink, Barbara was already flirting with some elderly gentleman. I breathed a sigh of relief and went to find Linda. But something told me that this journey wouldn't be as peaceful as I had hoped. The first night on the ship passed relatively calmly. I woke up early in the morning, looking forward to breakfast in the fresh air. Linda was still asleep, so I quietly slipped out of the cabin and headed to the shower at the end of the corridor. When I returned wrapped in a towel, I nearly had a heart attack. Barbara was sitting on my bed in my cabin. Good morning, Jack, she purred, looking me over. Oh, sorry, am I interrupting? I clutched my towel tightly. Barbara, what are you doing here? She batted her eyelashes innocently. Oh, dear, I have such a problem. Something happened with the air conditioning in my cabin. It's unbearably hot there. I thought maybe I could stay here for a bit while they fix it. I opened my mouth to object, but at that moment Linda woke up. Mom, she mumbled sleepily. What happened? Barbara immediately put on a suffering expression. Oh, darling, I'm having such problems in my cabin. I didn't know where else to go. Linda, of course, immediately started fussing. Poor mom. Of course you can stay here. Jack, you don't mind, do you? I stood there, still in just a towel, feeling like a complete idiot. Um, no, of course not. I don't mind. Wonderful, Barbara exclaimed. Jack, dear, could you bring me a glass of water? My throat is so dry from this heat. I silently headed to the mini bar, feeling Barbara's gaze on me. Something told me this was going to be a very long day. After breakfast, I decided to escape to the gym. Maybe physical exercise would help me deal with the stress. But no such luck. Oh, Jack, how great that I ran into you. Barbara's voice sounded just as I was about to reach the treadmill. Could you show me how to use these machines? I so want to stay in shape. I spent the next hour trying to explain to Barbara the principles of the simplest exercise equipment while she accidentally brushed against me at every opportunity. Jack, you're so strong, she purred when I was helping her with the dumbbells. Linda is so lucky to have you. I felt myself blushing. Um, thanks, Barbara, but, you know, I have to go. Need to, uh, check on the kids. I practically ran out of the gym, feeling cold sweat running down my back. What the hell is going on? Is Barbara trying to... No, that's just ridiculous. I must have misunderstood everything. In the evening, we all went as a family to dinner in the ship's main restaurant. I hoped that the presence of Linda and the children would keep Barbara from her strange behavior.
how wrong I was. Oh, I think I dropped my napkin, Barbara said and dove under the table. A second later, I felt something touch my leg. I jumped, hitting my knee on the table. Dad, what's wrong? My son asked in surprise. N nothing, I mumbled, feeling myself blushing. Just an ant bit me. Barbara emerged from under the table, holding the napkin and smiling innocently. I looked at her, then at Linda, who thankfully was busy talking to our daughter. What should I do? How do I stop this madness without destroying the family? I didn't know the answers to these questions. But one thing I knew for sure, this was going to be a very, very long cruise. On the third day of the cruise, I felt like I was starting to go crazy. Barbara seemed to be everywhere. Wherever I went, she accidentally appeared nearby. In the morning, I decided to swim in the pool. I hadn't even made a couple of laps when I heard a familiar voice. Jack, darling, what a coincidence. I nearly choked. Barbara was standing by the pool in a swimsuit that was, let's just say, not quite appropriate for a woman her age. Will you help me with sunscreen? She purred, holding out a bottle. Uh, sorry, Barbara, I need to, uh, go to the bathroom, I mumbled, and quickly got out of the pool. As I was running away, I heard a woman telling her friend, Look, what a cute couple. He takes such good care of her, even though she's older. I nearly tripped. A couple, me and Barbara, oh God. In the afternoon, I decided to hide in the ship's library. Surely Barbara wouldn't find me there, I thought. How wrong I was. Oh, Jack, you like reading too? Her voice sounded after half an hour. How about something romantic? She handed me a book with the unambiguous title, Passion on Deck. No, thanks, I mumbled, jumping up from the chair. I need to go. Running out of the library, I bumped into an elderly couple. Oh, young man, the woman smiled. Don't run away from your lady like that. Love knows no age. I mumbled something incoherent and hurried away. In the evening, Linda and I decided to visit the ship's casino. I hoped that gambling would help me distract from the madness of the past few days. Jack, let's play roulette, Linda suggested. We approached the table, and I felt someone pressing against my back. Oh, excuse me, it's so crowded here, Barbara whispered in my ear. I quickly stepped away, accidentally bumping into some man. Hey, watch it, he protested. Sorry, I mumbled. I didn't mean to... It's all right, darling, Barbara intervened, putting her hand on my shoulder. Let's play together instead. Linda looked at us in surprise. Mom, I didn't know you were into gambling. Oh, at my age, you need to try new things, Barbara winked, especially in such pleasant company. I felt cold sweat running down my back. The situation was getting out of control. You know what? I said, stepping away from the table. I'm not feeling well. I'll go get some fresh air. I practically ran out of the casino, but even on deck, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I looked around and saw several passengers observing me with interest. Look, I heard a whisper. That's the man who's having an affair with an older woman. How romantic, I groaned. It seemed the whole ship was already gossiping about my non-existent fling with Barbara. How do I get out of this situation? I returned to the cabin, hoping to get at least a little rest from this madness, but when I opened the door, I nearly fainted. Barbara was lying on my bed, dressed in, what even is that? Oh, Jack, she purred, I'm suffering so much from seasickness, maybe you could help me relax? I slammed the door and leaned against the wall, breathing heavily. This is too much. Jack, what happened? Linda's voice made me jump. Linda, I tried to smile, but I think it came out more like a grimace. Nothing, just, uh, there's a mess in there? I'll clean it up now. Linda frowned. You've been acting strange lately. Is everything all right? I nodded, feeling cold sweat running down my back. Of course, dear, just seasickness, probably. Hmm, Linda didn't look convinced. Okay, shall we go to dinner? Yes, of course, I replied, relieved to lead her away from the cabin. But let's eat at a different restaurant today for a change. I hope that in a new place, we could avoid meeting Barbara but I greatly underestimated her persistence. The next morning, I woke up with a firm resolve to end this madness. I had to talk to Barbara and clarify the situation once and for all. I found her by the pool, flirting with some elderly gentleman. Barbara, we need to talk, I said, trying to make my voice sound firm. She excused herself to her companion and followed me to a quiet corner of the deck. What's going on? I asked directly. Why are you doing this? Barbara sighed, and for a moment I saw something like vulnerability in her eyes. Oh, Jack, don't you understand? She said. I feel so lonely. Sarah has grown up. She has her own family. And I, I'm just an old woman who's not needed by anyone. 
I felt a pang of pity but quickly pulled myself together. That's no excuse, Barbara. You're putting my marriage, my family at risk. Her face suddenly changed, becoming hard and determined. What if I tell Sarah that it was you who was pursuing me? She hissed. Who will she believe, her husband or her own mother? I felt the ground slip from under my feet. You wouldn't do that, I said, but there was no confidence in my voice. Don't test me, Jack, Barbara replied. If you don't play by my rules, I'll create such a scandal that your life will turn into hell. With these words, she turned and left, leaving me in complete confusion. All day I was on edge. Linda noticed my state and started asking questions. Jack, what's going on? She asked at dinner. You've been so jumpy lately. I opened my mouth to answer, but at that moment, Barbara approached our table. Oh, dears, here you are, she exclaimed. Jack, honey, could you help me with dessert? There's such a big selection, I just can't decide. Linda frowned. Mom, why are you asking Jack? I can help you. Oh, don't worry, dear, Barbara smiled. Jack and I have been getting along so well lately. I saw a flicker of suspicion in Linda's eyes. The situation was heating up. Later that evening, when we returned to our cabin, Linda turned to me. Jack, what's going on between you and my mom? I felt my heart sink. What could I say? Nothing, dear. I tried to smile. Your mom is just, well, you know how she is. Linda didn't look convinced. I feel like you're hiding something from me. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. It was Barbara, and she looked upset. Oh, dears, I'm sorry to bother you, she said in a trembling voice. But I feel so bad. I think I have seasickness again. Jack, could you escort me to the medical bay? I looked at Linda, not knowing what to do. Her eyes narrowed. I'll take Mom myself, she said firmly. No, no, dear, Barbara protested. You're so tired. Let Jack go. He's been so caring lately. There was a tense pause. I felt sweat running down my back. All right, Linda finally said. Jack, take Mom, and then we need to have a serious talk. I nodded, feeling the noose tightening around my neck. When Barbara and I went out into the corridor, she hissed, If you tell her the truth, I'll jump overboard, and it will be on your conscience. I froze in place, not believing my ears. How could I get out of this situation without destroying my family and not becoming the cause of a tragedy? The next morning began with an announcement over the loudspeaker. Attention all passengers. The captain requests Mr. Jack Thompson and Mrs. Barbara Wilson to report to the captain's bridge immediately. I repeat, I felt the blood drain from my face. Linda looked at me suspiciously. Jack, what's going on? Why is the captain calling you and my mom? I, I don't know, I mumbled, getting up. I'll go find out. When I reached the captain's bridge, Barbara was already there. The captain, a stern man with a gray beard, looked at us disapprovingly. Mr. Thompson, Mrs. Wilson, he began, troubling rumors have reached me about your behavior on board. I opened my mouth to object, but the captain raised his hand, stopping me. I don't want to know the details, but if your behavior continues, I'll have to put you ashore at the next port. But, Barbara began, but then the door burst open and Linda rushed into the bridge. What's going on here? She exclaimed. Jack, Mom, what's the captain talking about? I looked at Barbara, then at Linda, and realized I couldn't take it anymore. Linda, your mother has been trying to seduce me since the beginning of the cruise, I blurted out. She's been pursuing me, setting up compromising situations. What? Linda turned to Barbara. Mom, is this true? Barbara turned pale. I, I didn't. And then she rushed to the door, ran out onto the deck, and ran towards the ship's railing. She's going to jump! Someone from the passengers shouted. Linda and I rushed after her. A crowd of curious passengers gathered around us. Mom, stop! Linda screamed. Barbara stood at the edge of the deck, ready to jump. Don't come any closer, she shouted. I'm not needed by anyone anyway. And then from the crowd stepped out an elderly gentleman, the same one Barbara had been flirting with by the pool. Barbara, darling, he said softly. Please don't do this. I need you. Barbara froze. What? I fell in love with you at first sight, the man continued, but I thought you already had someone. He glanced in my direction. Now, I understand that I was mistaken. Please, give me a chance to make you happy. Silence fell on the deck. Everyone was waiting to see what Barbara would do. Slowly, very slowly, she stepped away from the edge and fell into the elderly gentleman's arms. Linda turned to me, her eyes full of tears. Jack, why didn't you tell me? I hugged her. I was afraid of destroying our family. I'm sorry. The captain cleared his throat. Uh-huh. Given the circumstances, I think we can forget about putting you ashore. But please, no more drama on my ship. The passengers around us applauded. 
Some even teared up. And I stood there hugging Linda, thinking about how one week can turn your whole life upside down. But maybe sometimes you need a storm to clear the air and start anew. Barbara and her new admirer walked away holding hands. Linda looked at me. We have a lot to talk about. I nodded. Yes, we do. But let's start by spending this day together, just you and me, like in the good old days. Linda smiled and took my hand. We walked along the deck, leaving behind the storm that had nearly destroyed our family, but ultimately made us stronger. The cruise wasn't over yet, and I knew that we had many conversations and possibly tears ahead of us. But now, looking at the calm sea and feeling Linda's hand in mine, I felt that we would manage. After all, we had weathered a real storm and stood our ground, and that means something. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.